is a measles outbreak going around the world and South Africa is included. If you are living in South Africa and you're wondering how to take care of you and your loved ones during this epidemic, stay tuned because in this video I'll be talking all things measles. I'll be talking about the symptoms you can expect when uh, one is infected with measles, how measles can spread from one person to another, and how you can manage measles. Lastly, I'll be talking about the different vaccines that are available in South Africa that can be given to children and adults. Hello, my name is Violet, I'm a pharmacist, and this is Pharmacy and Life. Measles is not just a little rash, it is a highly contagious viral disease that is airborne and transmitted through air droplets from one person to the other and can last up to two hours in the air or on surfaces that it lands on. Measles is one of the leading causes of death in children less than two years. Headache, fever, cough, blood nose, tiredness, body aches, loss of breath. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not talking about Corona. But actually, the World Health Organization has blamed the Corona pandemic on the measles outbreak so because a lot of countries have implemented lockdown during this corona pandemic many many children have skipped their vaccination appointments hence the outbreak so let's rewind measles is airborne goes into one's body through mucosal the nose the eyes and uh, the mouth and then once it goes into the body goes to the lungs from the lungs into the lymph nodes, from the lymph nodes into the blood, and then it is spread to the rest of the body, including the lungs, the brain, and the intestine. Okay, so because of uh, measles being airborne and getting into one's body through the mouth and the nose and the eyes, uh, measles symptoms actually starts from head to toe. But when a patient uh, contracts measles, they go for about 10 to 14 days without experiencing any symptoms. The patient can still spread measles during this phase. So after that 10 to 14 days, uh, the patient will experience cough, very, very high fever that can go up to 40 degrees Celsius, uh, blood nose and red eyes. And these symptoms can last up to three to four days. So I know it can be very hectic dealing with such symptoms and you would want to grab anything close by to manage these symptoms at home. Stay tuned for later on in the video where I will tell you the one drug that you should never use when treating measles symptoms and this drug is easily accessible. So after the three days, you will experience what we call the complex spots that you find on the side of your cheeks inside your mouth and it's like white spots that you just find on the mucosa with the mucosa on the side of the cheeks and after that uh, the next four days you will experience a rash that will actually start from head to toe to toe it will spread to the rest of the body rapidly with about three to four days and then after that, we, we go through what we call the recovery phase where most of the fever is gone down, but this recovery phase is characterized by persistent cough and the patient can still spread the disease during this period. Okay, so how does one spread the disease? Because measles is airborne, uh, one can contact the spreads from inhaling the droplets. Uh, one can spread the disease through sneezing, saliva, skin to skin contact, and getting into contact with a contaminated surface. Because remember, measles uh, virus can last up to two hours on surfaces and in the air. Guys, I know these babies are cute, but if you know that you're experiencing some heavy symptoms, your cough, your high fever, avoid kissing this baby, they're so cute, I know, but <laughs> avoid doing that, especially those that go to crash because that is where measles spreads rapidly, okay, yeah. And another thing is that uh, a pregnant woman can actually spread 
measles to an unborn child or the breastfeeding uh, the baby or just being around the newborn but one thing that is very important is that uh, breastfeeding can actually help give the baby immunity to a uh, measles virus people that are more vulnerable to getting the virus are obviously your children under two years your adults that are under 20 years your geriatrics your grandmas and your grandpas because they have decreased immunity speaking of immunity your immunocompromised patients such as your hiv and aids patients your diabetic patients and your tb patients are at more risk of uh, developing complications such as pneumonia uh, encephalitis and diarrhea and remember these patients can be asymptomatic because of their compromised immunity. Measles is 95% preventable by vaccination. So if you vaccinate, it means that you have 95% chance of not getting the virus. Okay? So it is very important for people to vaccinate. Take your children to nearest clinic to vaccinate. And adults, you can actually also get a booster for measles. So how do we treat or manage the measles disease? We try by all means to get down the symptoms low. So rest guys, rest, rest, rest. Uh, give your body a fighting chance when you're resting and hydrate, drink lots of water uh, to try and manage the congestion and actually uh, liquidify the mucus, the cough and then high fever you can take ibuprofen or paracetamol now when it comes to the level ones that pink paracetamol actually works okay you will manage the pain and the fever and it will help your baby to rest <laughs> okay Comment down below if you have experience with your baby. Tell me, does cowpole actually help your baby sleep? Okay? Comment down below and let me know. And I know a few mothers have told me this, but <laughs> let me know. Okay? Um, what else can you do? So, for breathlessness, nebulize if you need to. Um, clean your surfaces regularly to avoid the ongoing spread of the disease in the household um, vitamin A is actually also important uh, because it will increase the immunity which means it will boost your antibodies in fighting this um, this virus now the one thing that you should not use is aspirin Aspirin triggers what we call a race syndrome in children, uh, especially those less than two years. And this is a syndrome where it targets the brain and the liver. So you'll find that there's a lot of confusion in the child, uh, convulsions, and sometimes uh, seizures, and also liver damage. So what you should not do is give your child metlamon, Grandpa, Dispirin, none of that, okay? Paracetamol is the way to go to manage your pain and feet. So, the immunosome dropping can be given to pregnant women as well as children and infants. And the post-exposure vaccination can be given up to 72 hours after contracting the disease. So, what are the different vaccinations or slash vaccines that are available in South Africa? We have Ms. Bio, which is a live attenuated measles uh, vaccine. And then we have the MMR, which is the measles, mumps and rubella that can be given to kids in combination. But it is also the advised uh, vaccination for booster in adults. So people that are advised to take your booster are the healthcare professionals, patients that are of high risk, the HIV and AIDS patients, the diabetics, and
and actually people that work with children or work in high congested areas because that's where measles actually thrives in spreading um, in South Africa the government does apply uh, vaccines at your nearest clinic and it is in the uh, children's uh, vaccine schedule so the kids or the children can be vaccinated at six months and 12 months uh, I know right now the Department of Health is running a campaign where healthcare workers are going to cl uh, clinics to vaccinate they're going to preschools to vaccinate children under two years and giving boosters to children under four years and also uh, going to uh, primary schools to check for those that have been vaccinated if your child has been vaccinated in less than four weeks i think that's when they don't vaccinate your child but they will need proof if you want to go to a private institution obviously that is your preference i know this camp is around 200 250 around those lines and i'm sure that if you go to your nearest general practitioner that actually vaccinates can also get your vaccination what i know is that there is a measles vaccine that is not covered by the the what do you call this medical aids i will not say the brand obviously but if you go to this scam they will explain that to you that this uh, measles uh, thingy will not be covered by the medical aid so in your next appointment do come back with this much to cover their vaccine as well as the service fee yeah so that is it from me guys thank you so much for watching this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below if you've gotten the measles uh, disease or infection and how you've managed it so until next time bye